to here's a CNN article about whether Putin accidentally revived NATO Soviet or not. Union out, the Americans in, and the Germans down. That's what the fuck is the C? Why is wait 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 wait? I would have never thought that CNN would ever show this. What is happening right now? This is like, are they just flexing at this point? Like they're just openly being like, when CNN posts this. That's kind of a weird situation because, like, when CNN posts, it almost seems like a flex. This is true as fuck about NATO, for the record. This is absolutely, absolutely true. Out, the Americans in, and the Germans down. That's how NATO's first ever Secretary General described the organization's mission. Originally, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization aimed to protect members from the threat posed by the Soviet Union. But with that threat gone when the USSR collapsed, NATO struggled to redefine its role and relevance. Until now. Today, Bro, this is like a victory no lap. Question. NATO is relevant. It is effective. And there's more needed now than ever. I gotta fix the fucking AC. It's NATO hot is the club again. you want to be part of if you want other members to have your back and defend your interests. Originally founded by 12 countries in 1949, NATO stands strong with 30 members today. Its key principle, collective defense. One for all and all for one. That was enshrined in Article 5 of its founding treaty, stating that an armed attack on one member is considered an attack on all NATO allies. In reality, that means any member can count on nearly 3.5 million personnel, troops and civilians combined. We seek no conflict, but if conflict comes to us, we're ready for it, and we will defend every inch of NATO territory. That is crucial for smaller countries who would be defenseless without their allies. So NATO is really the best security guarantee you can have right now uh, in today's world. It's really the 13 nations that make NATO that really decide on the priorities, the operations and the budget. Those decisions do not always come easily, with NATO's funding proving a sticking point in the past. We must also ensure that NATO members meet their financial obligations and pay what they owe. Many have not been doing that. Under NATO guidelines, members should be spending 2% of their GDP on defense each year. But in recent years, few members have done so. NATO also relies on contributions of forces from its members, as it doesn't have its own army. There was a big question mark about NATO's future at the end of the Cold War. I'm going to go ahead and assume that, like, this didn't per cover Gladio or the German Nazis that were put into positions of prominence or the fascist battalions that were activated as they were the only militant forces readily available to fight against the communist and even sometimes non-revolutionary social democratic uh, revisionist uh, leftist forces in uh, European nation states in the aftermath of World War II. Of course, that is the case. And no, I'm not talking about just Azov Battalion. Azov Battalion is just like basic NATO shit. It's been happening since the beginning of NATO. But somehow circumstances and crises gave NATO every time a new purpose. It started with the crisis in the Western Balkans. Then it turned quickly into an alliance to help in the fight against terrorism after 9-11. And especially with its largest ever... Yeah, yeah. Dude, stopping terrorism after 9-11. Got it. Okay. Yeah, no, this quickly. This article title says it all. These NATO generals had unusual backgrounds. They served in the Third Reich. Yeah, really unusual. What? Who are the best communist killers, dude? Nazis. Well, I mean, obviously they weren't very good at it, but like... Because they did get fucking owned. But like ultimately, that's what they knew. It was not unusual for NATO to, you know, NATO, a, an administration created with the express purpose of, uh, you know, purging uh, communism and communist influence from Europe. 
is of course going to have the communist killers. Operation in Afghanistan. NATO evolved and expanded with new tasks ranging from members. One of the funniest things I saw randomly when I was looking into like the NATO, uh, the, the recent talks that were happening around NATO is that they had a fucking panel. Dude, look at the audacity of the West, dude. A truly barbaric. Here in the West, we like to fancy ourselves. We like to fancy ourselves as like, you know, above everything. We're like, you know, arbiters of democracy. And one of the grossest and most hypocritical examples of said barbarism was having a panel of Afghan women at the NATO, uh, you know, at the, at the NATO event talk about Ukrainian women. It's like, bro, do you not see what you're fucking, what you did in Afghanistan too? Are you serious? Like you guys brought in a bunch of like your victims to talk about the fucking next generation of victims. Really? That's crazy. Serving as peacekeepers in Bosnia to fighting human trafficking, to intercepting refugees in the Mediterranean. And now, obviously, with Vladimir Putin waging its second war of aggression against Ukraine, what's clear is that you need an organization like NATO. Vladimir Putin started his war in Ukraine, demanding that NATO roll its borders back to where they were in the 1990s, which was swiftly rejected. And nothing unites a group more than a common enemy, as NATO Secretary General pointed out before the invasion. If Kremlin's aim is to have less... Interesting that, where, where, did, did, was Libya mentioned there or no? NATO on its borders, it will only get more NATO. Three months later... After 200 years of military non-alignment, Sweden has chosen a new path. Sweden and Finland submitted our formal requests to join NATO. A symbolic move from countries who even during the most tense moments of the Cold War did not feel the need to join the alliance. It's actually a big boost to the European family because you have two members of the European Union who are joining NATO and it makes, I think it creates a greater overlap between those two clubs. The two countries would add firepower and a geopolitical boost to NATO. The Baltic region is actually the most vulnerable, critical region if you want to have a credible defense and deterrence posture against uh, Russia. Finland's ascension particularly would mean that a nation with which Russia shares an 830-mile border would become formally militarily aligned with the U.S. For now, Putin's plans seem to have backfired. His war united the West against Moscow in ways that seemed unimaginable before. Wow.